Figma offers a wide range of drawing tools and ways to bring in vector content. So in this video, we'll focus on creating and editing vector content. In the browser, with my travel app open, we're going to add a few shapes. First of all, we'll start by adding a rectangle up here so we can see this content. So click up here, you're going to see we have the rectangle tool, and if you click on the arrow, you'll see all the different shape tools, including arrows, and this is also where you can go to place images. Click on the rectangle tool, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit up here. So I'm going to press Command and use my scroll wheel on my mouse. You can press the plus key. You can also, you can use it in a lot of different ways, actually. Come up to the upper left here, and we're going to draw or create a rectangle. So click and drag and create a rectangle about yay big. You can see the measurement label, which is actually pretty cool. Let go. And come over here to the right. You're going to see that we have our content here. We've got our fill. We've got our opacity if you want. We can turn off the fill. We can add multiple fills to an object, like an image on top of a color on top of a color. Click on the color over here, and you can change what it looks like. So we're going to make it a little bit darker. You can type in a lot of different values, like hex, RGB, CSS, HSB. You can come down here and see all of the colors that you've got available. These are personal colors that we started with, as well as document colors or colors from, you won't see this, or colors from any teams. So let's actually do this. Make the color like this. You can change opacity and all kinds of things. Scroll down a little bit and you should see a plus. Go ahead and click on plus and that should add it to your list. Now my list might be different from yours. Don't worry about that. And there we go. We can now save that. And if later on, if we want to edit it, you can actually change a color and right click and either update or delete it. That's kind of cool. Okay, I'll click away. And we're going to take that object, that rectangle, and we're just going to resize it a little bit. And then we're going to put it behind the other object. So with shapes, like any program, you can grab a corner or a side or things like that. But in here, you can come right up to the edge and just drag and ch change the size of things. And this is going to kind of freak you out a little bit if you use Illustrator, for instance. But it's really awesome. All right, we've got that. Now we're going to arrange it or put it behind. So if you want, you can right click or control click on this object and choose send to back. It's going to put it behind this content right here, the actual status bar content. So move the cursor over the content in that status bar. Now it might be a little tricky here. And then click and hold down a second. Now it'll show if you've selected it. And then drag it down. And you can position it here. And then let go. There we go. All right, now let's create a button. So scroll down a little bit down here towards the bottom. And come up to the rectangle tool again. I'm just going to draw another rectangle starting roughly on the side of the guide here. And drag across. And we're going to make this a different color. So come over to the right where it says fill. Click on the fill color. And I've already got a blue that I've created. So if you want to try and create this one, you can. You can see the hexadecimal value right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually change the corner radius. So I'll close this up. Click on the X. Now we should see some corner radius options here. If you don't see them, what you can do is you can actually zoom in a little bit until you see them. And you can see them now. Drag the corner radius. You can drag them in to change the value. And if you look on the right, you can also change it over here. Now, if you want to, you can actually press the Option key to change one of them, then release the mouse button and the key. Now, I'm going to make them all the same again, so I'm going to try and pull them all out here. And as you're going to see, it's, it's going to take them one at a time. If you want to on the right over here, you can actually say, let's make the corners independent or dependent on each other. Click that, and you can change it to something you want, like 20 maybe. Or I'll go a little bit smaller, maybe like five, a little bit of rounded corner. There we go. All right, we're going to add a little bit of text in a while here. But next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an icon. So if you move up, press the space bar, you can scroll up a little bit. Come up here and click and hold down on the rectangle tool to the right, the arrow there, and come to ellipse and just draw an ellipse. You can see we're just going to draw a circle. Press the shift key to make it a perfect circle. Now to edit a shape, what you can do is once you let go of all that, you can double click a shape and it'll give you the points. You can then come to these points if you want to and click on them. You'll see the little direction handles. You can start changing them. You can move them by dragging them. You can delete them by pressing backspace or delete, but you got to be careful with that because you might wind up with an open path like this. I'm going to undo that, Command Z or Control Z. And you can also come to a point and Command click on it or Control click on it, and you can change it from one with handles to one without. You can go back and forth. All right, now by initially double clicking to edit this, we're in editing mode. You can see up here we can do a bunch of different things like bend things and all that. Just click done. And then we're just going to draw another ellipse out here. We could have copied the one we had. Draw another ellipse. We're going to make it a little bit smaller this time. And we're going to put it kind of in the center here. You should see the smart guides will kick in to align it. I'm going to use 
Shift and Option on Mac or Shift and Alt on Windows to scale this from the center once I get it aligned. There we go. If you select both objects by dragging across, we can use a Boolean operation to combine them. So if you come up here, you're going to see the Boolean. Click on the arrow to the right, and you're going to see Exclude Selection. And that should punch it through for us. If you want to change the fill color, you can. I might go to a little bit lighter blue, for instance, or something like that. There we go. With our content starting to take shape and a few more things set up, we'll move on to working with drawing tools a little bit.